diplomats right now in Lviv, uh, or w are they spending the nights in Poland and going back and forth? Have we made any kind of commitment to the safe passage to any kind of extraction, if you will, for key members of the Zelensky government, if necessary? And what would be our commitment to any insurgency that developed, given if it were a full-scale invasion, if, if any? I mean, there was training, there was support. And one final question. I should write these down. Sorry. Uh, your reaction to uh, former Secretary of State Pompeo and former President Trump praising Putin's cleverness, uh, strength, and smartness in the last couple I'll of I'll start with that one. Uh, I have no response. In fact, I have no words. Uh, to move on to Lviv, uh, I think what uh, you heard from us uh, on Sunday is that uh, the secretary had uh, determined uh, that it was in the best interests, in the best uh, interest of the safety and security uh, of our team on the ground uh, for them to temporarily relocate uh, into Poland. Uh, they have been spending the night uh, in Poland, but they have been regularly uh, essentially commuting back into Lviv. Our uh, charge, uh, Christina Kavin, uh, has been uh, leading the team back on the ground in Lviv. We have every expectation that, we, that they will continue to do so as long as the security environment remains permissive. Uh, when they are on the ground in Lviv, they're able to undertake uh, emergency consular services uh, to help uh, Americans who may be seeking to leave the country uh, they are engaging with our uh, Ukrainian partners, uh, and they have important missions that they're able to fulfill uh, in Lviv. But regardless of whether they're in Lviv, whether they are in Poland, uh, that in no way changes uh, the commitment we have uh, to our Ukrainian partners. It in no way diminishes the partnership uh, we have with uh, Kyiv. We've remained in constant contact uh, with our partners in the Ukrainian government, and that takes me to your question about uh, any advice uh, we may have passed on to the Zelensky government. Uh, the fact is that we are in contact uh, with our uh, friends and counterparts in Kyiv on a daily basis. As you know, Foreign Minister Kuleba uh, was here yesterday. The president had an opportunity to uh, speak to President Zelensky uh, over the weekend. The secretary was uh, in the Oval Office uh, for uh, that call. Uh, the president, President Zelensky, and his team know that they have the steadfast and unwavering support uh, of the United States. Of course, our goal in all of this is to avert that worst case scenario, the worst case scenario that uh, we've already talked about in the course of this briefing. Uh, the fact is that the president and his team uh, will make decisions in the coming days best uh, based on the best interests of, of their country and their people. Uh, the foreign minister was asked a question about this uh, just yesterday. Uh, he provided uh, uh, an insight into uh, their thinking, but these will be decisions uh, that uh, our Ukrainian counterparts will make um, uh, based on uh, their own determinations and, and their own calculus. Uh, in terms of our, um, uh, let me put it this way, in terms of uh, our continued assistance uh, to our Ukrainian partners, uh, the president has made very clear that uh, in the event of a Russian invasion, which, as we have said, is beginning, we will not only continue our defensive security assistance to our Ukrainian partners, but we will double down on it. Uh, so on top of the unprecedented level of defensive security assistance that we provided to our Ukrainian partners over uh, the last year, $650 million, including a $200 million uh, drawdown that the president signed in December, uh, deliveries of which uh, continue to uh, flow into Kyiv. Uh, flow into Ukraine, I should say. Uh, we will continue, uh, not only continue to provide that support, uh, but we will uh, look to uh, further uh, that defensive security assistance for uh, our Ukrainian partners. Uh, Kylie. Um, I'm just wondering if Russia has responded at all to Blinken's yet letter yesterday, and um, if, you know what diplomatic conversations between the U.S. and Russia have looked like in the last 24 hours. What I'll say is uh, we, the Secretary laid out uh, for Foreign Minister Lavrov uh, in a, a private communication uh, the fact that under the current circumstances uh, and um, what we have seen from the Russian, Russian Federation so far, uh, our conclusion that a meeting this week in Geneva uh, would not serve the purpose uh, that any such meeting uh, would need to serve. And first and foremost, that is to avert 
a brutal, massive, costly conflict. Uh, the, the Russians and all of you and, uh, later heard that publicly uh, from Secretary Blinken. Uh, the Russians know um, precisely our position. They know through private communications and through our own public messaging uh, that we stand ready to engage diplomatically uh, if they are willing to do so uh, in good faith. Uh, and if they are uh, willing to uh, change their posture, uh, we will be uh, ready uh, willing and able uh, to engage them on this. And, and did the secretary detail what in good faith would look like in this letter, or was it uh, broad descriptions like you just gave? We, we are not going to be uh, prescriptive uh, in terms of uh, what de-escalation might look like, uh, what good faith might look like. Uh, the, we have been very clear, uh, because all of you know, presumably uh, our counterparts in the Russian Federation know, uh, what steps might look like uh, if they were interested in signaling de-escalation. Uh, we have not seen any of those steps. And again, uh, we have seen steps that actually move in the opposite direction. And then just last question. Um, can or will the US keep open our embassy in Moscow uh, if there's a full-scale invasion into Ukraine? We believe uh, in times of conflict, in times of crisis, uh, that the ability to communicate uh, is in some ways even more imperative. Uh, now, long before uh, the massive Russian military buildup started along Ukraine's borders uh, in Belarus, of course, uh, our team on the ground uh, in Moscow and throughout Russia, uh, they were in a very difficult operating environment, a very difficult operating environment because of the restrictions uh, that the Russian Federation had uh, imposed on them. Uh, it will be our goal uh, to uh, be in a position to maintain uh, diplomatic communication, the ability uh, to convey clearly uh, any messages that uh, we need to send to uh, the Russian Federation. Uh, embassies are an important tool uh, in that, uh, but we have also seen uh, the Russian Federation, even in recent days, uh, escalate on an unprovoked and needless basis. Uh, the um, bilateral uh, challenges in terms of our own uh, diplomatic staffing uh, in Moscow um, and our ability uh, to operate uh, an embassy on the ground. But again, uh, we believe communication, we believe the ability to pass messages uh, is even more important in times of, uh, of great crisis.